Many of you longtime fans of Woodworking for Mere Mortals have been asking why I haven't been posting as many videos on YouTube as I used to. Well, the short answer is because I've been making videos, lots and lots of videos for my next online course, The Weekend Workshop. In fact, I've been completely transforming my shop all summer long and I can't wait to give you a shop tour. That's gonna to be coming up really soon. But of course there's a lot more to it than that and in the interest of full transparency, I wanted to talk to you about it. If you're interested in boring nuts and bolts youtube -y stuff, then stick around. If not, check out my next woodworking video. And hey, if you wanna get notified when I post it, you can try subscribing or clicking the notification bell. That sort of works. There's still a certain quaint charm about the subscription model, I suppose. I also have over 11 years of content you can check out whenever you like. First, I want to talk about the YouTuber life cycle curve. Derek over at Veritasium posted a great video back in May describing this phenomenon. I'll have a link down in the description where you can check it out. If you're a creator, you should definitely watch it. Basically, nearly all YouTube channels will rise to a peak of popularity, then decline. There's a few exceptions, but this is universally true for almost all creators. You can look at the channel history of any channel that's been around for a while, and you'll, you'll see how the numbers follow this curve. If this were TV, most older channels, including mine, would have been canceled long ago. People lose interest and they move on, and with Fewer people watching a creator's videos, YouTube has no interest in recommending them. Remember, YouTube is only interested in watch time. If you are a creator who can make a bare minimum of quality content, quantity is gonna be far more important. The peak of a channel's popularity seems to occur somewhere between four and seven years. I started on YouTube back in 2008, and for me, the peak was around 2015, 16. I was churning out not just videos, but project videos on a weekly basis all year long. Naturally, this is unsustainable for independent creators. There are so many creators on YouTube and so much competition today, especially in the woodworking slash maker arena, that creator burnout is inevitable. Of course, YouTube couldn't care less about burnout. Its algorithm will simply move on to the next creator who is starting to crank out content on a regular basis. Quality of content is largely irrelevant. This can be disheartening for creators, especially when our skills as presenters, filmmakers, editors, and specifically woodworkers continues to improve. Just as content creators really start to hit their stride and their quality improves, the YouTuber life cycle curve is already heading downward. There's a point of diminishing returns. Then comes the overall demise of how-to content on YouTube. At one point, YouTube was very interested in educational shows. I even attended a meeting at YouTube once to discuss the future of educational channels. It looked very bright, but the reality is that it's impossible to make a living creating instructional videos on this platform alone. The numbers just aren't there. So what works better is a lean back experience. These are the vast majority of woodworking and maker channels, the watch me build something you probably won't channels. This is the maker version of the gaming's let's play video. It's, it's the let's build video. Minimal camera shots with high speed footage giving viewers an overview of the project that the builder made, sometimes with voiceovers recorded after the project is completed. And I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to minimize this style in any way. I watch those videos too, and they're a lot of fun. My project videos followed a similar pattern. They all contain educational elements, a tip here and there, but the primary goal isn't to teach woodworking in any kind of concise, meaningful manner. Most people are satisfied to simply watch other people make things. I think it's kind of like football. Most of us enjoy watching football, but we'll never play football ourselves, and there's nothing wrong with that. YouTube AdSense, it doesn't really pay much. Not enough to earn a living wage at this level, at least where I live, so enter the sponsorship system. I did my first sponsored spot back in 2013. It was an Audible ad. Back then, Audible was kind of like Squarespace, Skillshare, or <clears throat> NordVPN is now. Everybody was doing them. Over time, more and more sponsors came to me making offers that anyone would be crazy to 
you pass up. I always tried to make my ad spots fun, something people would enjoy watching. I was very proud of those. It was good money, I had a lot of creative freedom, and they were actually a lot of fun to make. But eventually, advertisers started demanding more and more control over their messages presentation, requiring a list of bullet points to be met with every ad, specific language for me to use, as well as demanding a minimum number of views per video, which dictates the type of video you make. They needed to approve every 60 second spot and expect edits. I was spending an inordinate amount of time working on these ads instead of building things out of wood. Not only that, but they started to require a mention at the very beginning of each video too. This left a lot less room for creativity, which is why almost every sponsored spot you see today on YouTube sounds and looks nearly identical. Keep in mind that these are permanent ads. Once the video is posted, the ads can't be removed, aside from re-editing the video and then re-uploading it. And this is something that some creators are now doing, and I've been considering doing that myself. Today's sponsored spots and videos are ubiquitous. Some guys plug multiple products in the course of a single video, which is kind of a surefire way to destroy any community you have. It's good short-term income, but sponsorships begin to erode YouTube channels. Look at the reality. What do you do when you start to sense an ad coming on? You skip over it, we all do. I've gotten pretty good at that 10 second fast forward double tap. <laughs> Most viewers understand that sponsored ads are important for the lifeblood of creators and to keep creators in business, but there's still an inconvenience for viewers that we tend to skip. And when I began looking into my own analytics, this became very clear. When viewers skip large chunks of a video, the overall viewer engagement or the audience retention rate goes down. YouTube sees this as a sign that people just aren't interested in your content and they begin recommending your videos less and less. And right now, viewer retention is pretty much the most important metric that the algorithm sees. Even though the strategy for advertisers is just to blanket the entire platform with as many creators as possible to get their messages across, I have a suspicion that the sponsorship bubble will eventually burst for all but the very largest channels as YouTube comes to resemble TV more and more. An unfortunate byproduct of the sponsorship model is that creators begin to tailor video content to fit the product. I've done this myself. I mean, every time a maker gets a, like a free TV or a motorized lift, you can expect yet another TV stand. Or every time a creator gets a new mattress, we get a new bed project. I've done three of those myself. Or we begin to just crank out videos just for the sake of getting something posted to appease an advertiser obligation. We shift our focus from making content that appeals to viewers or even ourselves to third party interests. Bottom line, this simply became a game that I was no longer interested in playing. So in December of last year, 2018, I completed my final sponsor obligation and I haven't included a sponsor in a video since. Almost immediately, I began to see my view count, subscription rate, and engagement increase. It was pretty dramatic. I'm not gonna say that I'll never do a sponsored spot again. I probably will, but if I do, it's gonna need to be pretty lucrative. Of course, my annual income took a huge hit, but it left me free to promote my own products instead of somebody else's, all the while providing honest value to viewers of Woodworking for Mere Mortals. So there was another interesting thing that I began to notice a few years back, project videos, videos where I actually build something were the videos that generated the least views. Videos where I discuss woodworking topics perform much better. As a woodworker, this is very frustrating because making things is what I enjoy doing the most. I'm sure the same is true with the maker channels too. There is nothing more deflating than working many long hours to build a project and edit it into a cool video and have hardly anybody watch it. And one of the problems here is just saturation. There are hundreds of woodworking channels and over a thousand maker channels now. It's a lot of competition for eyeballs and there are only so many variations on a coffee table that you can make. I mean, I joke about this a lot, but seriously, I think we've reached peak river table. The funny thing is for most projects people post on YouTube, I can just look at the thumbnail picture of the project and know enough about it that I don't really need to bother watching the video. I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So my maker subscription feed is basically Pinterest. 
So as creators, we start to play the thumbnail game, adding as many circles, arrows, and YouTube screen face poses as possible. One exclamation point isn't enough. Now you need three exclamation points. The other route is to make projects that are just outrageous enough that people want to watch. I mean, especially projects that involve knives or bullets or other weapons. Those seem to be good choices here. Hey, more power to those people who can consistently create this kind of stuff. Again, these are lean back experiences. You might pick up a few tips here and there, and a lot of people consider these inspirational videos, but mostly the look what I can do videos exist for fun and entertainment. So when I looked at the numbers on my project videos, I noticed that although they are my least viewed, they have my most highly engaged viewers. These are the people who are motivated and seriously want to try woodwork. This was a light bulb moment for me. I realized that these are the lives that I want to impact. I refined my channel to focus content even tighter for the beginning woodworker. I no longer wanted to showcase my ego projects, but I wanted to provide a genuine service to an underserved community. New woodworkers without massive dream shops and expensive woodworking tools that are so common on YouTube. And as you know, that's when I created my own product, The Weekend Woodworker, back in 2017, as a way to offer honest, structured, comprehensive, step-by-step -step woodworking instruction for beginning woodworkers from a guy with years of experience. Since then, I've affected over 10,000 lives. Members who didn't know anything about woodworking are now building all kinds of things. This is the most personally rewarding point in my career. I absolutely love teaching. Finally, I'm able to produce the kind of content that I love to make, educational products that go beyond videos and plans, but with structured training modules, understandable plans, tips, and community. But the best part is, is that I've discovered a lot more about myself and why I enjoy woodworking so much. I've embraced life with fewer and fewer tools. I've purged over half my shop since June and I've been having an absolute blast reworking my entire shop into a super efficient, more minimal system that frees me from thinking that I need more or better tools or I gotta have more space to be happy. For the first time ever, I can actually park a car in this space. Not that I would make a habit of this, but not everybody has the same privilege as me. Hey, if I'm gonna preach about small space woodworking, I'm gonna live it and embrace it. And I've been able to make some of the most kick-ass projects ever with less clutter, less clutter in my brain, and fewer distractions. I feel more energetic and excited about woodworking than ever before. My relationship with YouTube has evolved over the years, just like creators evolve. One of the most cliched comments that all YouTubers get at some point is, I miss the old you. <laughs> and what those people are really saying is that they don't understand how people grow and change. I remember hearing Joe Penna, Mystery Guitar Man, joking about this back in 2013 or so when he started changing his comments content and pursuing new professional goals. And look what he's done. This year, he made a feature film called Arctic. This is one of my favorite films of the year, and it wouldn't have ever happened if he had stuck to only making those really fun music videos that he was making on YouTube. Oh, and while we're talking about cliched comments that all YouTubers get, sometimes when I don't post videos, what people say, and I'm sure all woodworkers and maker channels get this when they aren't churning out content is, well, I guess he's just run out of ideas. <laughs> and most likely this comment comes from people who have never really done anything creative in their lives. I mean, ideas don't really work like that. People aren't just born with an allotment of ideas and after you use them up, no more ideas. Ideas are fluid and constant and I have more ideas and goals now than ever, even if they don't end up on YouTube. For me to produce the high quality educational content that I wanna make and put it on YouTube for a very small audience would be a really, really ill-advised business decision. So there you go, that's why I don't post as much on YouTube. I simply don't have enough time because I'm making the videos that I love making and reaching the people that I want to impact the most. But I still love YouTube. I watch videos all the time. I mean, if you want to be successful on YouTube, you kind of have to love YouTube. You got to be a dedicated, engaged user of the platform and you got to be willing to support user-made content. And don't worry, once I wrap up the weekend workshop course, I'll be able to get back to a much more regular upload schedule 
but on my terms, hyper-focused on providing value to my viewers rather than chasing an ever-changing algorithm. Thanks for watching, everybody.